Jimmy Webb there and uh, Galveston. See, and during that, Carl said, "What's this about?" Didn't you? See, th things you're interested in, you see. If only that inqu you that inquisitive when the Tudors and Stuarts came up, you'd have you'd have a C or so a B. Do you do Stuarts? Didn't you? It's just Tudors. Oh, they're the worst, aren't they? <laughs> Stuarts, I've got a lot of time for the Tudors. Can you know what I mean? Listen, right. As you know, I uh, lent Carl, part of his education, his historical <laughs> education, I lent Carl, um, Gladiator, the movie on DVD, which he watched on his PlayStation 2, and, uh, Rasputin. Do you know last week about. when you gave me this, did you know my result for history? No. That's weird, isn't it? Yep. Now, uh, right, okay, it's the film review. Carl, you just, just tell it from the heart, tell us what you thought about the film, what you thought the- Can I just ask, is this the first time you'd seen Gladiator? You'd never seen it before? No. Okay. And what were your thoughts? Okay. <laughs> the film of you. <laughs> Glad you. Um. It's all right. Noth nothing great. Uh. It's like it's like an old um sort of an old version of Rocky done in the olden days, really. Right. A bloke fighting other people. Sure. Um. How, how sort of well known is the story? Do you reckon people know the, the basics? Well, just very, very quickly, just do right, the plot. quickly. There's a guy called Max. Um... Maximus, yeah. Yeah. There's Caesar, and there's Caesar's kid, and, uh, Max goes to war, sort of wins it, comes back, uh, Caesar says, you're good at what you do. Me, I wish my son was as good as you. Uh, so I want you to be in charge when I die. His kid finds out, Bit annoyed about it, kills his dad because he don't want anyone to hear that he said that he wants him to be in charge. Yeah. So his kid gets in charge and thinks, "I'll show you. You're not going to be a king. I am. You're going to be a slave or something." And then next thing you see is. My, sorry, getting... can I just that? My only thought is the film's three hours long, so <laughs> maybe we should <laughs> go through the we, whole plot. We, there. We, we've done the first ten minutes. But yeah. Go on. So yeah, he's a slave, and then. Yeah, but then that, that that was an interesting bit that I thought. Right. I mean, I was watching this with a girlfriend. She was already annoyed because she wanted to watch Friends on E4. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so it was a good episode as well this week. Was it? Yeah. Don't tell her that. Okay. Right. So um. <sighs> so she so she was annoyed. And she said, "Come on, then, put it on." <laughs> and I got it wrong straight away because it says on the back 149. So I thought that was an hour and 49 minutes. It turned <laughs> out it was 149. No, I thought it was one hour 49. Yeah. But it was 149 minutes. Sure. So it it overran anyway. By 40 minutes. Yeah. So anyway, the interesting bit was where he was going across a desert on a horse. And I think to show you how long he'd been going across a desert on his horse, he's showing you a shot of the horse's knees and they were bleeding. <laughs> and I just wondered whether that's what horses do if they run for a long time. Can, do you know? I don't. Good. Right, so anyway, so he goes on, get, it keeps going on like this. Um, he's a slave and then he has a fight at the end with the Caesar's kid and he kills him. And that, that's how it ended. Okay, good. What did you think of it? Just generally, what, what bits, what do you think was wrong with it? Right, well I've read up on it and there's already a, a fact that is wrong. Right. Max, no, Caesar's kid, he didn't actually kill his dad, his dad died of a natural death. Right, in real life you in, mean? Yeah. Okay. And, um, what's, what's Caesar's kid's name? C comedian or something? Comedian. I think it's comedian, yeah. 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 That's where the name comes from, the, the, when you, you know, a funny person is called a comedian. He didn't American. actually get killed in real life by Max. No. He died by his sister poisoning him, and, um... And he didn't da no, no, Are no. you saying, are you saying that this is not a historical document? It's, it's, oh, it's wrong. All over the place. Yeah. Well, well in next terms week, of- Well, next week I'm giving you Braveheart and that is actually true. That is actually, that, that is, that is factually no, accurate. No, I can't handle it. It is, it is. It was a little Listen, Australian fella that helped him out. Just for people who watched it, Go they on. know that the, the, um, uh, the, the guy, Caesar's kid. Yeah. He died, uh, his sister tried to poison him, that didn't work. And apparently he was a gay fella. <laughs> And his boyfriend, who was a wrestler, strangled him. That's well, where did you story. get this information? On the internet. I thought I'd look it up to see how much of it I actually got right. Yes. <laughs> and that's what I read. Okay, so, uh, out of ten? <sighs> Five. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's no good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get it out. I it's annoying the way it says, like, 
you know, this film's got to be seen at the cinema, because I saw it at home, and I don't think I missed out on anything. Very good point. I think that's the, probably the point they're making, but yours is, yours is valid too. We'll play a record, and after that, I'm going to ask you about Rasputin, the Mad Monk. I like that. That's all right. It's a bit, it's a bit easy. It's not their best. I like their earlier stuff a little bit better, you know. But what I don't like is them throwing around mollusks. I don't like it when that poor little octopus gets flung around. I know it's dead, but there's something, there's a certain lack of respect for the, for the whole mollusk for the, community. For the squid and yeah. octopi fraternity. Like I said to you, when I used to go to Wales for my holidays, mm. they used to get washed up on the beach and people used to go over them on the motorbikes. <laughs> and they were ch cheering and stuff, and it's just like, do you, do you realise what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. sick, isn't it? But anyway, uh, Gladiator, just was going to add on the end of that, um, if you're into that sort of film, Jason and the Argonauts is probably a better bet. <laughs> is that factually a a accurate? Did you look that up a lot? Did, did, did skeletons actually come out of the ground and fight? Yeah. I don't know, but it's a more enjoyable film. Okay. And okay. It's shorter. Okay, now, um, just moving, um, quickly on, just the last item on Carl's re-education this week. Uh, Rasputin, you read a little book about Rasputin? Uh... What did you know about Rasputin before you read the book, Carl? Can I just tell you? Oh. When I handed him this book, it was my house, I said, right, he went, he went, ah, oh, is he the one that lived under the bridge? <laughs> and I went, what do you mean? He went, the fellow lived under the bridge and he had to, he went, and you had to pass him with a, with a, and Jane, um, went, you're thinking of, um, Rapunzel. And he went, yeah, and I went, well, that's not Rapunzel either. <laughs> Rapunzel, L Rapunzel's, you had to say, isn't that, you know, you had to guess his The person who lived under the bridge was a troll in the three little green yeah, book graphs. Yeah, I'm a troll, folded well. So, to answer your question, Steve, that's what he knew about <laughs> Rusty Ewing, okay? So have you read this whole book? Can I just have a look at it, Rick? This whole book, it's about the size of a beer mat. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking, but did, did, so did you read the whole thing? No. You didn't well, manage you to read didn't the whole thing? didn't even do that. Well, again, some of the names in there are so long and foreign sounding that I just thought, <laughs> I can't, I can't remember all these. So I no. just got to the meat of the story. Go on, okay, what, what did you learn from about Rasputin? Right, um, he was, um, he was a monk. Yep. And, um, uh, Mad? Uh, he... Was he a mad man? Hang on a minute. Don't, Don't confuse him. Sorry. Right. Go on. Um, God. You see, this is what happened in the exams. <laughs> <laughs> right, he was, he was... Oh, don't do that when I'm drinking, Carl, was, please, mate. He loved his women. <laughs> That's how, how the story started off. Uh, he had really <laughs> nice... <laughs> story started off? Yeah. He had really nice eyes, and that's what everyone fell for, especially the women. Yeah. Anyway, they thought, the people back then thought he had special powers because, um, he could hypnotise people or something. Oh, yeah. And it was about a little lad who, um, yeah. who had some sort of blood clot on his leg. <laughs> and, um, and he said, just calm down and you'll be alright. And people thought he had special powers, but what it was, what he was doing, he was saying calm down and he relaxed and it stopped the blood flowing sort of as fast. Mm. And that's how he got better. But anyway, that's the only bit of special work that he did. And then he kept going on and he was going in brothels and all that. And, um, and the people in the town thought, this isn't right. He shouldn't be going about doing this. And, um... Where did he live? Uh, Russia. Right. Is that right? Yep. What sort of era? I thought you'd might know, you know, know about 1800. Okay. All right. Okay. And, um, and then... Do you want to check that, Steve? You've got the book. People well, got I know sick for a fact of him. That's not right. <laughs> People got sick of him and, um, and they said, oh, we'll have to get rid of him. So they tried to, he, he loved cakes as well as women. Okay. So they said, let's poison a cake. And they poisoned a load Easier of Easier than poisoning a woman, wouldn't and, it? Uh, and, uh, and he ate these cakes and it just didn't kill him and they, they were like, God, what's going on? And they kept giving him more and more cakes and... <laughs> he was suspicious. <laughs> and that didn't work, so the fella said, oh, sir, I'm gonna shoot him. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine it was the end of his tether. So... I mean, he was back and forth to Mr. Kipling's, he you know, like, He on. shot him once, and that didn't work, and the fella thought, oh my god. And he started running away, and Rasputin's running after him, and he shoots him like another, I think he took four Face bullets. Face full of, uh, Battenberg. Four... <laughs> four bullets. Couldn't took, swear, then. Four bullets. It took to kill him, and then this fella who was after him chucked him in an icy lake, and that was the end of him. But I don't understand... <laughs> Sort of... What don't you understand, Carl? Well, the fact that, you know, he's a bit of a name in history. And I don't understand why, because <laughs> it just sounds a bit like my brother. <laughs> Does he love women and cakes? And do you think that'll be his downfall? 
<laughs> right, I want you to study. Right, if you want to do, uh, that's the first introduction. Right, if you want to do some extracurricular, what would that um, get stuff, me? Get there's there's a song by Boney M that yeah, yeah, lays yeah. it out. Suzanne told me about that, saying about uh, <laughs> Russia's greatest love machine. Yeah, but it didn't say anything about cakes. No. So I think if you get the 12 inch mix, no, they, 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 they say it, it, according to Boney M, and I don't know who's, who's correct, the bloke wrote that, or M, um, they put some poison into his wine. Now I don't know if, uh, uh, M have done their research mm. or whether, yeah, uh, they did suit him until he was dead. Um, it, I put them, he was the greatest love machine in Russia. I, again, I don't think it says that in the book, but mm. M might know more. Than that fella. So, what's know. your final verdict on uh, Ra Ra Rasputin? Just um, just a normal bloke who didn't have that much luck, really. I, I, you know, I, that's what that's what I don't understand. I was waiting for something special at the end, but just a normal fellow, really. Yeah, yeah, just an everyday. That was all the time, didn't it? Just an everyday mad monk. Yeah, just an everyday mad monk. You have to shoot and poison and throw in icy lakes to kill him, and uh, who uh, loves women and cakes. I mean. <laughs> Come on, do we need another one of them? <laughs> Boring! Oh. What would you say about him then? How would you sum him up? I think you've done it. I think you've done it. There you go. So next week, Chief Sugar Babes are freaks electric. Are they, Carl? Dunno. I feel like, uh, feels like Christmas Day. What, and you didn't get the gift you wanted? Yeah, do you know that, like, anti-climax? Yeah. When, uh... You've been looking forward to it for so long. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, I knew you were looking forward to it, that's why it took you 14 years <laughs> to get the result, and then it was two other people that got them for you. Do you so wish I... that we hadn't done it? Uh, no. Nah. It's alright. It's alright, isn't it? What's your girlfriend gonna say? I don't think I'll see her again. <laughs> <laughs> she, she likes a man who knows about the Tudors and Stuarts, does she? Yeah, first gladiator, then the... Yeah, you've been bluffing. She goes, whenever she said, where's he go to Stuarts? go, Good. Like, <laughs> yeah. lo lots of things, but I, uh, look, 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 it's a bird. What happened to uh, Henry VIII's last wife? Oh, oh I wouldn't, I, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, Friends is on <laughs> telly. Friends is on. <laughs> Can yeah. I just change the subject by saying things like, you know, about the, the only king in a pack of cards? <laughs> <laughs> that threw off the scent. That <laughs> threw us off the scent. That wouldn't, that wouldn't fool an invigilator, would it? Mm. That's the thing. You can't use that one. Uh, with an exam board. Carl, have yeah. you ever logged on to Friends Reunited? It was the site that everyone was talking about last year. No. Are you aware of the concept? I've heard about it, but there's no one at, from school who would want to see it again, really. So basically, for those that don't know, you have to log on to his website and then you can help, it helps you track down your old schoolmates if they've also logged on and stuff. And, uh, we sort of took the liberty, really, of, of looking on the Friends Reunited site and typing in your school <laughs> and trying to track down any of your old mates. We didn't get in touch with any of them, don't we worry. We didn't do that. We're we not going to surprise you, you with them now. No. But I was just interested to know, like, some of your thoughts on some of the names that I could run past you. I mean, these are people from your year. Um, just tell me if you recognise the names. Alison Birch? Think I remember her. What's your thought? What's your thoughts on it? Uh, posh don't, don't, girl, don't, don't be libelous. Don't yeah. say, don't be like, no. No. Um, Posh, uh, probably did pretty well in history and that. <laughs> Sarah Morris? God, yeah. Remember, uh. Go on. You're grinning. What's the thought? <laughs> Go on. No, just, um, she was alright. She was a popular one. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it was, she was nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, what about, uh, Darren Buckley? He was, uh, he was one of my best mates. Was he really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. What do you reckon he's doing now? Do you still keep in touch? Um, when my mum and dad were still in Manchester and they had a butty shop, he used to go in because the bookies was next door. <laughs> <laughs> I know the way he paints a picture. He used if, to, uh, if you do this in your history exam, Carl, you will walk it. Go on. So you, your parents had a butty shop, there was a bookies next door. Yeah, and he, 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 he liked having a bit of a gamble, so he used to, um, I think he works for some insurance company. Do you think that his fiance Beth knows he's got a gambling problem? <laughs> Yeah. Or that his two-year-old son, Lewis. No. Yeah, they live in Cheadle H Home. Hume. Uh, Cheadle Hume. He must be doing well. It's He's still supporting the Blue Army and frequents the shrine on a fortnightly basis. Funny thing with him is, right, when, um, <laughs> uh, he used to stay over at his house and, um, his dad was a copper and, um, and I remember his dad came down and said, right, I want to see you two. I was like, oh, God, what's happened? And, um, got us round the, round the table. He said, um, do you know much about drugs? So we were like, what's all this about? So he goes, you know, they, they're not, they're not good for anyone, you know, the stupid thing to get into. And we're like, yeah, we know. And he went, you know, do you? He said, yeah. He said, what's this then? And he'd found something in his bedroom 
and it was a Skittle. <laughs> what the sweet? Do you know little sweets with the S on it. <laughs> and it oh was really? Like drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he said, well, yeah, it's a Skittle. Yeah, I know what it is. He said, oh, he's bluffing like that as a slang word. Yeah, he thought, he thought, because he was a copper, he probably had to be down with all the terms and that. So we said, oh, it's a Skittle. And he, he said, yeah, yeah, I know what it is, but what's it doing in your bedroom? <laughs> oh. And it was like, no, it's a toffee. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Darren, uh, yeah, I know, it's a toffee, it's a squib, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. Carl, more people from your, uh, past. Debbie Carr? Yeah, she was, uh, she was another nice one. <laughs> one <laughs> what does that mean? Is that a euphemism? <laughs> no, she was one of them that you'd sort of go, she's nice, but you, she'd never be your girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? She was, Not really. even though she was in the same year, she seemed a lot older. Right. And it like, wasn't a teacher, was it? There was, there was three of them who all hung together and they seemed to hang around like the older kids, the ones who looked like men. Do you know what I mean? The yeah. other what did you look like, like then? Well, it's just that I, I had youthful sort of looks, so whereas well. like the older ones had like beards and stuff. <laughs> It's the gang of boys in the fifth form with beers. <laughs> Were they smoking pipes? <laughs> Go, come over here, me Philly. Oh, you, you, oh, you Debbie Carr, come over here, you little beauty. No, yeah. She was like, I love that. It, they it, went it, hanging around with beers. There's the big boys. Oh, fishing. <laughs> That's lovely beers. What do you I mean? just see a, a whole row of George Bernard Shaw's. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do in history, boy? Yeah. They got any? You're an idiot. Oh. They were like, um, you know, I'd be there, sort of. Plain punching people in the arm. Cause he's oh, yeah. oh, that's Still. a great game. Oh, I love that, punching people in the arm. Is that part of the Olympics, now? <laughs> it's, 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 I think it was exhibition this year. Right. But it's it's going uh, to be the Winter Olympics because you've got to do it in uh, just a cap sleeve shirt sure. in winter. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're uh, playing that. She, uh, <laughs> but whilst I but was she didn't doing appreciate that. that, she used to go, ow! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always think whilst I was doing that, they were like the Charlie's Angels and they'd be sorting out a mission somewhere because they were really like, there was something about them. They yeah. thought, you know, yeah, they're first, special. They were private they were, detectives. What if it were for a man they never see? <laughs> okay, well, th th here's a name I'm interested in because, uh, well, let me just tell you the name first. Uh, Adam Clifton. Hmm. Oh. Go on, what? what are your thoughts on Clifton? Uh, he was one of them kids, he was alright, but he had that thing when, um, if you didn't have enough milk. <laughs> <laughs> he had like, uh, wrinkly hands and. <laughs> White, white, ah. white bits in his nails. Oh! Because yeah. he didn't have enough milk. Yeah. yeah. So therefore, <laughs> you didn't like him because you didn't get enough milk. This is not to be confused with the two people with the big heads and the webbed feet, is it? Webbed hands. Well, this was well, yeah, interesting. They weren't related. They must have been somewhere along the evolutionary sort of trail, do you know what I mean? They must have come from the same sort of stock. But no, you, you wouldn't have liked him. He's just, he's just one of them people. He was alright, but... Well, I, before anything. you say any more, um... On, the, on Friends United, you can leave a little message which explains what you've been doing and uh, what's, what your, you know, your life's like now. And most people leave maybe two paragraphs. Yeah. Adam, I've printed it off. He seems to have printed, I think it's, there's about six pages here of stuff. He keeps updating it. And he, he just basically lists his memories about everyone, okay, yeah. at the school and uh, what he thinks of everyone. And uh, he says, I often see Simon, da 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 da, he's doing a right for himself, self employed illustrator, Mark Cooper, Carl Pilkington. All right. And your name comes up. Now, I don't know if you've told us this story, I think you may have done, but I can't remember the facts about it. It just says, Carl Pilkington, with his pet bird, was it a magpie? I can't remember. He brought it to school to show everyone, and it flew away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, no, they do that, don't they? You True. Them what what you was the story there, You give them seed and they just leave. What do you mean? Well, it sounds like Kez. Well, that's <laughs> it, I was a big fan of Kez. And, um, <laughs> it was the time our dog had just died. Yeah. So I didn't have any pets and the cats were always getting run over. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we didn't want any more pets. Yeah. But there was a magpie that used to fly about on the estate and I managed to um, sort of tame it. <laughs> and um, in the end- With, it with became, a chair and a whip? What do you became, mean you tamed it? Well, just used to sort of hang around it and talk- But how did you get it. hold of it? Did you catch it? Well, eventually, yeah, it used to just come to me and I'd, the annoying thing was it got to a point when I wish I hadn't bothered because he <laughs> used to pop me bike tires. He used to, he used to sit on, on like, if I was talking to me mates and I was on my grifter. <laughs> I love how he just throws things in. <laughs> it's like an Alan, Alan Bennett play. He <laughs> landed on me tyre and he used to peck at the tyre and pop it and then oh, he, used to, no. he used to then never go away so it was always like around the house and my dad said never bring it in. 
So he used to sit on the porch, <laughs> and I used to go out, and he used to fly down and land on my head. Oh. And it really hurt. It used to, like, peck and stuff. <laughs> he thought it was a tire. Yeah, so it wasn't so much tamed <laughs> as a stalker. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So you took it to school and it flew away? Yeah. So did you take it in proudly going, look at my mouth, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, no. Uh, it, it, I think it got a bit confused in the area that it was in, because I used to just keep it sort of around our estate, but sure. the school was a bit of a distance away. How did you get so, it there? Tying it on my finger. Did you walk? Yeah. <laughs> Why? So it was happy there, and then it got to- uh? But it used to be one of those things that people would stop me in the street and sort of go, oh, what's that? It's and did- I don't suppose you- called it Maggie. You didn't get, uh, Charlie's Angels to go and find out what happened to it? <laughs> investigate? Were they impressed? No, uh, not really. No. But Listen, go on, any- any- like, Carl, let's come know? back to me, let's come back to it. Let's have, uh, a Hip Hop Hooray track. It's the big Hip Hop selection from Big Steve Merchant. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> Just trying to sound hip. This is Spearhead from many years back. Uh, a track again, I think got largely overlooked at the time, but worth hearing again. People in the middle. <sighs> Which is good as me. I'm just going to tell the, uh, the, uh, the listeners there, Carl, this is quite a little insecure sort of chap, and he was just worried about that last bit. He was going, who would ever find that interesting? He was worried about people finding him boring. And Steve said, as I said, you know, it's, it's like an Alan Bennett thing. He went, yeah, but, you know, no one would care about Alan Bennett if he wasn't such a hit maker. They wouldn't care what he had to say. And we just looked at him for a while and he went, ah, oh, thinking of Tony Bennett. <laughs> Bless him. So it's almost the end of the show, Carl. Oh, yeah. And it's really been a Carl special. I this think, is a Carl special, yeah. Well, next week, we we'll, we'll lay off next, next week. week. We have to we're know. not going to, uh... He's, he wants to retire a little bit, just, uh... Well, those old, uh, lottery numbers might come up tonight anyway. Exactly. You might, what are they again? What's the four you've got with? Put them away now. What, come on, well, give us all six. No. Why? Carl, while you're, um, rummaging for that... Five, nine, twelve, and twenty-six. A few more names that you may recall from Friends Reunited. Go on. Lisa Shufflebotham? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember her? Yeah. She, uh... Was she one of Charlie's Angels? She, no. No, she wasn't that nice, but she wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> her and, her and her mate Rachel, I remember, I don't know why, but it was some sort of PE lesson where it had to be a bloke and two girls, and they were fighting over me. <laughs> <laughs> and Could you hear what they were saying? They, were you just, they, they were just like, I want him, and I was loving it. Stuck in the middle and they were fighting over me. And then the next week I thought I'll sit near them. What sort of game do they play at this school? I Amazing. don't know. That's an incredible game. But I think- Punch me on the arm. No, punch me on the arm, they, Carl. They just, they just went through it. Cause the following week I thought, right, I'll sit near them again cause I quite enjoyed the way they fighted over me. But then they picked somebody else and I don't know who I was with that week. So you didn't, uh, didn't get any action with the shuffle both or a friend? No. And what? then as she got older, she went a bit off. <laughs> <laughs> she's, not like a, she's probably nice now. It's just, I mean, I'll say about myself, when when you get to sort of the end of secondary school, you do sort of go a bit odd looking. Right. Do you know what I mean? When your yeah. sort of head grows funny. <laughs> I, I, I would just love to go back to school of that era. I mean, just what happened to people, whether, you know, all people sprouting limbs and No, do you know what I mean? When, when you're like 12 and that, you, you're quite, no, not 12, when you're 10, when you're 7 to 10, you sort of look healthy. And you look at your pictures when you go, hey, I was a good looking lad. But then when you get to mm. late secondary school, something happens. Yeah. And you just look a bit odd. Okay, well what about Alison Thorpe? Not sure about her. I, I sort of know the name, can't put a face to it. Damien C uh, Comer? Again. Know the name. Yeah. Can't remember anything. No. Yeah. It's a shame. Well, these are pretty much all the names I could find. We've had some interesting thoughts though, and interesting anecdotes. Yeah. Anyone in particular that you'd like to, uh, to say hello to that, uh, maybe, maybe listening now that no, you- No, I think I would have mentioned Darren Buckley if you hadn't brought him up. Oh, right. He was, he was like my buddy. Yeah. yeah. Did so. you ever see the, um, uh, Magpie again when you took it to the school and confused it? No. You're joking. That was the end of it, was it? Yeah. So where did it go? Probably, uh, to some other kid. Cause I mean, oh. it actually, it probably got killed. Cause <laughs> if, if it was being that friendly with other people, some people might have took advantage of it. <laughs> in what way? <laughs> well, there was a program on the other week about- What, in the way that shuffle both of them are trying to take advantage of you? Well, <laughs> yeah. There was a program on the other week about bear whisperers. Yeah. And, uh, some blokes got really friendly with a bear, and then the, the, when they were leaving that area where the bear was, they said, oh, we've caused a problem here, because there's some bear hunters coming in and moving into this area, mm. and it's gonna get a bullet if it, if it acts like this, so they had to scare it away, and that's what I should have done with, with Maggie. I should have terrified it a little bit, so <laughs> it wouldn't trust humans. 
<laughs> just introduced <laughs> it to some of your schoolmates, I'm sure, would have <laughs> yeah. freaked it right out. Well, the ones Maybe that was why it fled. It, it, didn't yeah, see, it, oh, no, it didn't see those two fellas with big heads and webbed hands coming towards it, did it? That would have terrified anything. It's like a scarecrow, like a two walking <laughs> scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, have we got time for a song for the ladies? What's, what's happening? Oh. We've, we've not really thought. Quick then, quick, just do it, just do it. Thanks very much. Well, no, no, we haven't li cl lined anything up, have we? I was gonna play, uh, Mary Lawson and that for you. And then Is this gonna be the final track? Wait, yeah, it would be, yeah. We've blown it. We've blown it on the Carl special. We have indeed. I'll play it next week. So, Carl there's got an E at history in GCSE. Mm -hmm. Any history teachers, anyone who can help Carl out, I think we should try and register him and take it this June. So, uh, So what's your homework for this week? Uh, you got to read about... Che Guevara, haven't yeah. you? The revolutionary leader. Yeah. Okay. Do you know anything about him at all? Have you got any basis? I just know that if you want to use his face on your business, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> Do you know, like, if, if McDonald's wanted to have him as, like, instead of Ronald McDonald? <laughs> <laughs> how does he do it? Steve, how does he do it, man? Oh, we, we, listen, just, just play a final record, Carl. Say goodbye and we'll, uh, see you next week. Alright. See you later. Uh, Cheers, mate. Oh. On XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello there. Pilkington. Steve, you got any other toilet related <laughs> anecdotes? Rick, my life is just full of toilet trauma. Yeah. And I, Carl, you may not realise this, but uh, a while back I used to host, this is bizarre, I used to host a radio show on the BBC World Service, right? Now, you, if you want someone who's, got, who's the voice of integrity, the voice of intelligence, the voice of a nation, you're going to come to me. That's yeah. obvious. And I was broadcasting to, and they've got listeners of something like 50, 60 million people around the world. It's mental, the listenership of the World Service. And I used to host this show with someone It's a big place, Steve. The world? Yeah. You're absolutely right. And uh, anyway, so I had to, I had to be into uh, Bush House where they broadcast from, 10 o'clock every Friday morning to broadcast around the world to 50 million people, right? And one week, uh, I just went to the toilet in my house, right? Everyone had left. I got there a bit late. I got up a bit late. Already against me. The clock was already against me. Had to be there at 10 o'clock, broadcast around the world. And we've got two toilets in our house, downstairs one, right? And the door had already been a bit dodgy. It was one of those doors where you had to give it a bit of a kick as you went in. It was getting a bit, it was getting a bit tight. I don't know what, the w wood was expanding or something. You know, I'm in there. And same thing again happens. No toilet paper. I think, oh, God, I'm going to have to somehow kind of make it up. Why don't you check first? I normally do, Rick. I normally do. It's just on a certain occasions when I'm bleary-eyed or something, I just, I forget. Or occasionally I forget. Normally I do check. Right. And um, you've got to bear in mind that it's not like this is happening every week. This is over the course of many years that sure. these incidents have acc accumulated. So um, you've condensed them for the purposes of this anecdote. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And sure. um, great. You're, you're, you're brilliant to keep the, keeping the pace up of an anecdote there, Rick. You've just drawn in. I don't know where I am now. Anyway, oh, oh, no, I know where I'm. I'm trapped in a toilet oh, with no God. toilet paper. Yeah. That's where I am. And I'm thinking maybe I peel off some of the wallpaper, you know, things like that. But there's nothing I can do. I got got upstairs. Pressure. Well, exactly, but I'll have to go upstairs and find Toilet a Toilet paper, <laughs> was there any? <laughs> there wasn't, sir. There wasn't? Oh. I'll have to go upstairs and maybe find a notepad or something like that. Oh. And, uh, so I try the door, right? The door's wedged, and I'm pulling on the door, and I can't get the door open. It's just like, it won't come open. And it's already, and I knew it was going to come to this at some point. Like, this is like, the clock's ticking, I'm trying to pull the door open, tries to run my ankles again, and I'm thinking, well, what I could do is I could open the window, I suppose, and, like, try and climb out, but... Not really, because I got the trousers on the ankles and that's Or if it was fun. raining, just stick your ass out, <laughs> two birds with one Sadly, it was a beautiful day, Rick. It's, I call it the World Bee Day. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so what I'm thinking is, well, wonder, I've got my mobile phone in there, luckily, because it's in my pocket. I'm thinking, well, maybe I could phone, I would seriously Kleenex. Think, maybe I'll phone <laughs> the fire brigade. By this point, I mean, it just dried. <laughs> No, it hadn't, it was- Hold on, was that little puppy not around? Cause that, sometimes you can call that, it's got a little bit wrapped round it. Listen. Uh, or just use the puppy issue. itself. There's 50 million people around the world gonna yeah. need to hear my voice in like, yeah. 30 minutes. Exactly. And Where's Steve? He's not locked in a toilet again, is he? <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. So, um, so, so I'm thinking about phoning the fire brigade, and I'm thinking, sure. like, if I do that, it's gonna, you know it's gonna be the first call that goes straight on the speakerphone. Yeah. For like, the entire- Fire Brigade service everywhere. With a butch hero carrying you down over his shoulders with your trousers around your ankles. <laughs> exactly. Can I just not pull him up? No! You've got to be learned a total lesson. Yeah. But I imagine the idea of a friend up and going, uh, hello there, I'm, uh, yeah, bit of, I'm trapped in a room in my house. Oh yeah, which one is it? Oh, it's you don't need to know. It's quite small. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It's not the toilet, is it? Because we don't want to come up and rescue someone who, who's trapped in the toilet. Which no. service do you require? <laughs> Paper. <laughs> so, um, so I, I think I can't find the fire brigade, the clock's ticking. So then I think, I think one of my housemates is still in the house, but still asleep. So I phone the house number, right, phone rings and rings and rings for ages, and eventually he answers the phone, <laughs> right, gets out of bed, answers the phone, yeah, hi, it's Steve, alright, what's wrong? 
I'm what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Just, oh, I didn't wait. No, no. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I just in the toilet. I'm just downstairs in the toilet. Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I'm well, I've finished what I'm. <laughs> Have you got any <laughs> toilet paper? Any bog roll? Yeah. So he had to um. Kind of scrape together a few bits of paper, you know, and sort of tin foil or whatever he could find yeah. in the house. A come, cactus. Come down oh no! Pass it f underneath the door, right? And then, I, then he, I said, "Can you move away from the door while I? Because I don't want you to hear me as I'm, you know, wiping the." And so you he didn't did say it. that. Yeah, well, I didn't want him to. You know, that's what. That's what, what sorry, what, what that's you, embarrassing. What were you wiping yeah, it with? Not tumbleweed. What do you mean? What no, noise? I know what you mean. Yeah. No, exactly. Right. So, um, so then I say, right, can you smash Why was he hovering? <laughs> Why didn't he want to walk away? <laughs> Will you keep your head- what was it- <laughs> outside with a glass to his ear? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thankfully there was- there was- there was a window in the door, but it was frosted glass. Yeah. You could just see my- my semi-naked body moving around. And, um, so eventually I said to him, look, listen, I'm gonna need you to sort of kick the door in. He's going, I don't want to kick the door in because you're going to have to pay for it, aren't we? I go, yeah, but I've got to go to the World Service. i got to well, yeah. And he was a lovely man. He's the weakest man. You've ever you've ever come across. It's like you. If there's one person you don't want to have to throw their body weight against the door, it was him. It's like he'll snap before the door will. So he's smashing against. This the door. sounds like a fetish to me, though. He went in there and there you were naked with lots of toilet paper, and you go, oh, you've broken the door down, and there I am. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Oh, you've rumbled me, Rick. <laughs> I wish I'd not told that embarrassing story on the radio. Like it wasn't embarrassing enough, you've just got to make it slightly more seedy. <laughs> oh, so did he, did, did he get it down? He did it, yeah, and I got to the World Service with like minutes to spare. Oh. And uh, interestingly, I told that story to 50 million people around the world. Joking. Yeah. Did they understand? I what, think what, so. What, what, I mean, is that a bit of a problem when you're on the World Service, like thinking of things that everyone can understand? Yes. You can't it's a bit like when talking yeah, to you, Carl. Yeah, exactly, Carl. I think mean, you're on thin ice there, worrying <laughs> about people understanding what you're saying. No, but you can't talk about stuff that's on the telly and that, because some people will say, well, we haven't even got a telly here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're listening to XFM 104.9. Player record. All apologies on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilton. Well, Steve, I met up with. I know it's forbidden, usually. Mm. I don't know why uh, Let me just expla it. explain to the uh, listener. Um, me and Steve have got a little bit of a pact. We're not allowed to talk to Carl during the week because he comes out with too much dynamite and we want it to be fresh and it's, it's just unfair. And if he sees us laughing, he, he clams up a little bit because he, he knows something's wrong with his head. So, um, I was in a pub and, uh, Carl called, he returned a call, I'd called you earlier, and, and I said, oh, I'm just across the, the road, I'll come over, and uh, he came over, and we had a conversation, and uh, I kept saying, no, save it, and I can't remember half the things he was saying, but I do remember one thing he said, he said that the human eye never grows, it's the, he said, he said, unlike your ears and nose that keeps growing all your life, he says the human eye never grows. Now there's a little bit of, he says, now you look at a baby, it's got big eyes. It's got the same size eyes as it will have. When, when, when a baby's never... born, everyone always goes, oh, look at its eyes, don't they? Because that's like the main feature. Yes. They're quite big. <laughs> they what? don't grow, they don't get any smaller, they stay the same size. What, you mean once you become an adult, you've the same sized no. eyes? No. As soon as you come out of the womb, <laughs> your eyes, the size they are, as a little baby, they stay the same size and just like the sockets. Okay. And I said, I pointed out to him, right, you know, I said, if that was true, Steve Merchant, when he was a baby, with these eyes he's got now, would look like a hammerhead shark. All right, calm down. <laughs> you don't want to go <laughs> lay into the eyes. Do you know what I mean? Just to prove my point. I didn't laugh. <laughs> Good. When he said that. Respect. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Well, I <laughs> I've got the eyes of the window to the soul. <laughs> and mine are, they happen to be enormous plate windows. glass windows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, you know, but no, they're so beautiful. But, but, many people but, find them beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're great, yeah, many people feel good. Um, yeah. but, uh, Do you know they don't have kneecaps either? My eyes, or? What? Ba babies. <laughs> when, when they're born, they, do, they don't get kneecaps until they're about two. <laughs> they don't get kneecaps? Is that true? Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, it might be true. Might be true. But it's, isn't it like a, isn't it a little bone in, it's part of the, Well, the, no, the, but all the, 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 the you've got lots more, lot more bones when you're born than Yeah, you've got 300, 300 when you're born, then 205 when you're an adult. Yeah, they all fuse, don't they? Do they? Like, the head's got to be all soft to come out. Right. Um, as we said earlier, you know. I would know, I'm a shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so God. So what did you say when he said about my eyes being huge? <laughs> okay, get off said, it. That, I said, that isn't nice, considering yeah. he's not here. Yeah, so that I wait until he's here when I slug him off. Yeah, very well. No, nice one, Carl. You're an hon honourable man. <laughs> oh, well, there's- uh, I know, you see, the thing is, right, that made me think that it might be a little bit of truth in this, 
There is as well, is the, the ear thing. <laughs> have you seen that with old That's men true, who yeah. have really long ears? Yeah. And big noses. Yeah. You mean do, that, they, do they eat buns and uh, walk around in the jungle, these, these old men? You mean that the ears and the nose carry on growing? Yeah, yeah they do. That's true. That's true. It's cartilage. Yeah, but not like, it's not like sort of Pinocchio. <laughs> no, no. After you're dead, you leave a body lying around, he's got a huge elephant really? ears. Really? left him long enough? Four foot nose. That's Incredible. what, yeah. Um, That's no, remarkable. But, but, you see, the, it's about the focal, um, uh, Length in in your eye, you see, because it's a it's like a big lens. So it makes sense that that they couldn't change that much. Because mm. um, an owl, do you know why an owl turns its head round, sort of like 180 degrees? No, because it, it can't move its eyes. Because the eyes take up the whole. It's the biggest eye in the animal kingdom. The eyes take up the whole of its skull. Cause really? That, yeah, yeah, and it has to move its. Yeah. Has so it got a brain in there as well? It's got a brain in there yeah, above the eye. Yeah. When I say the whole of the skull, quite I'm, yeah. There's yeah. also some space for the brain. What I meant is the the. The, the two diameters of the eye is the is the diameter of the. You've lost me there on, with diameters. And you didn't like maths, did you? No, don't like maths. Never understood it. Couldn't yeah. get to grips with maths. I don't know about you, Carl. Did you do maths, Carl? <laughs> now, how did you do in your exam for the maths? <laughs> did you do that? Was your, I bet yours was rather like my theory, which is why do you need to figure it all out when you've got a calculator? Exactly. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. You're and right. I agree. Well, let's play a record, and afterwards I'm going to be testing you on your homework this week, Carl. Mm. Um, Could we do uh, White Van Man first? We could do, oh, just to, you no, know, they've got no, to know what, to what they're people. dealing with, yeah. Um, Carl's homework was to read all about, um, as you know, Che Guevara. Absolutely. Uh, uh, last week, he did well on Rasputin, didn't he? Did very well on Rasputin. Yeah, uh, and perhaps with flying marks there. Uh, so, uh, um, let's, let's have a bit of Wu-Tang, shall we? Now, I just, uh, remind someone else, um, Carl's in the week. I know it's forbidden to talk to him, but we're, we're, I'll tell you this. He was talking, he was very excited about the Friends Reunited. He was a bit nervous at first, wasn't he, last week? But he was really getting into it. Um, and, uh, in the pub he was talking about those people and he said, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd never go on a reunion, though. He said, I'd never, never do that. What, a school like, reunion? Yeah, and he, said, he wouldn't want to see anyone. And I went, well, I, I said, I said, wouldn't you want to see those two lads with the big heads and the webbed hands? Oh, yeah, these were people you went to school with, weren't they? Yeah. Well, I didn't knock about with them, they were in the class. What were they called? Ah, uh, freaks. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And, uh, he said, no, I wouldn't want to see them. He said, because what could you say? Oh, you haven't changed much. Right. <laughs> and he went, he said, and they wouldn't go anyway, would they? I said, why? He went, well, they didn't have any friends. Right. And I said, well, weren't they friends with each other? And he went, no, that would have been too obvious. <laughs> like, they passed <laughs> it and went, no, I know it's tempting, but let's not. Everyone would think that's just what we were going to do. <laughs> yeah. <Let's> not do <laughs> yeah. So they didn't even hang around with each other. No. See, I must say, in my in my head, I've got something like it's like a some sort of extra thing from Blake Seven that they're like some sort of you know lagoon monster. But they just had slightly oversized heads, did they? See, does your head grow? Your hmm. eyes don't. Does your head? Because maybe they've got to a point now that it's all sort of caught up with each other. <laughs> Go on. Well, at the time, the the eyes were very small and the head was huge. <laughs> uh, just a very big head. And yeah. The, I mean, the fingers aren't going to change. You know, that's not. They had Not webbed funny. fingers. It was like the penguin in Batman. <laughs> really? Are you sure? No, honestly. Are you sure they weren't wearing mittens? No, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, they were, it wasn't home economics. They weren't getting some out of the oven, a very hot dish, were they? Every time you saw them. <laughs> but why were there two, but they weren't related and they weren't friends? I don't know, I suppose it's like asthma and that, innit? Some kids have it. <laughs> and, and it just was a coincidence. Yeah, but asthma's quite a common thing. Webbed hands, Carl. Yeah. I don't know, you don't think of it, do you, when you're a kid? You just sort of. Oh, when, yeah, you, <laughs> when you first see them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there goes the frog, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Carl, look, let's have, uh, <laughs> let's have a little quick session of White Van Man. <laughs> For those that don't listen to the show regularly, uh, The Sun, as you know, has a, a section called White Van Man where uh, a member of the public gets asked their opinions on the uh, week's big uh, political and social hot potatoes. Carl, we just thought uh, it would be funny if you answered some of the. Uh, Questions. It's not so much questions. It's just your views, really, on these big these big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics, and for he what? he was a ski he was a skier, right? And he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what? I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> Why? Because all you do it? is balance. But imagine, it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like, going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you have but to- it's not, it's not gonna help you, is No, it? it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it, with skiing? Yeah, but it's often to do with your, uh, athleticism, isn't it? It's no, but it'd be like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not- it's not gonna <laughs> help them. 
You, yeah, sit, you sit there and you go with the flow. Yeah. And you try and you hold Could I say, could I say, the, the, the drugs Apparently he was taking- that's his defence, Probably, the, it, it, it wasn't, it probably wasn't jacking up H or, you know, dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of, uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to him just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> Doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Are uh, you have, you have, uh, you tested you, you're pissed out your head. But why doesn't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's just not gonna help me out. But it is, isn't it? Cause, uh, performance enhancing drugs know, do. Wait, wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah? I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the lights <laughs> glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do. Okay, right, now, keep concentrating. Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up swimmers muscle. Swimmers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. Runners. Example, runners, yeah. No, not only do they help build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance while yeah. they're sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff, right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right, so again- He, was, he wasn't on a bomb would that help before- you? What? Why would that help you when you- all you've got to do is balance on skis. <laughs> not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a <laughs> lot to do with, you know, your body and no, your legs. No, it's practice, isn't it? It's like, if, you, if, if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, okay. do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I ate this bit. I ate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Um, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they? Saying, you know, she's daft and that, but. Daft, <laughs> mate, you! She's. <laughs> I, I think they're alright, honestly. Yeah, you I know, think right. she's alright. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um, Would you I agree don't... that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer, he doesn't need to be, do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like, you know, alright, I only got an E in history. <laughs> but knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, good luck to him, and he's done well out of it, and it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember though, um, when I, w when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station, and he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then, but he was stood there, and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when you <laughs> sort of go, sure I went to school, it's not the one with the big head. Yeah. But I do recognise him, then my girlfriend got off the train, and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so close to Oh, thank God for your know girlfriend. Does she, does she get, you get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? <laughs> she does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what not. about the fact that, uh, the pension crisis sure. is gonna force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s before you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Um, cause you see a lot of old people who look bored. <laughs> okay. And I honestly think if you, you keep, do. if you keep your brain busy, yeah. you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down, right, that that's when your body sort of dies cause it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. If you have a day off, you just feel worse, you'll mope about at home, doesn't do you any good What about, wh where do you draw the line then? What if you say lose a finger? Pop into work? Um, depends. If, if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're not gonna type as many words, but you, you'll do more at <laughs> work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his, uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this, it's the one no. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And? You know, I mean. Okay. Um, and finally. Uh, that, you see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the pres it's the prime minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. <sighs> All right. <laughs> okay. And uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot, and uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all? They had to show the video. The first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and, uh, B side. Well, he can't. It's, it's double A, yeah. Double A side. That's well, what he that, wanted to. That is how it works, is it? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And the thing is, which one... I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? And it's yes, like one of the yeah. best. So it doesn't really matter what it does, because people have got it, they can listen to what song they want at home. Doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And... It, it's just annoyed me now. I don't... Uh, it's... Who's annoyed you? Th this... Th just what goes on in the world. I'll tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world. If that's what people are talking about on the streets and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? 
You I think that? you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Shall I, shall I play a lovely song for you? Because you're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it. It's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here of Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's it's beautiful, and this is for Carl. Uh, XFM 104.9. I'm Richard Mays with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week. I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details. But what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the internet are. I don't know <laughs> why. No, if I mean, he came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what was the matter? Well, if you, there was people shooting at us and everything, it was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. There was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's well, this gun's not clean? Training, and I just he? cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shiny. Well, he's got to do that, it's more disgusting. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know what, what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into, that's what I do, you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, like, the, the Falklands or, you know, the Gobs, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? I go, you know the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it, it will be horrible, <laughs> yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I, I go, right, I'm not gonna go. And they go, <laughs> exactly. okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. Should be fine, yeah. Just like that. Uh, does anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone <laughs> then. <laughs> exactly. My um, brother, my brother went into the army, right, cos, um, cos he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. And, um, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight, 81. Eight, right? And he joined <laughs> back in like 81 or something. And uh, he, he, I don't know, he was in older shot or something. Oh yeah. And uh, he wrote back to me mum saying, uh, you know, what a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote. <laughs> what well, bad to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's all like, dear dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the dole, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. Uh, go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like saying, how are you Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to my, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go, which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, it's... Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her I'll say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertained in this phone call? Probably because he was new. What? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, you're, I mean you're the you're sergeant. Right. Uh, I don't know, maybe so, they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! But you that's got, ludicrous! Uh, I love it though. Uh, we're over the top. Bill no, I've, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, now this seems to be in order. Now you, because I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's good, my mum says don't Yeah. Go. Now you didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay. You definitely wrote this yourself. You always you're gonna have to d um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> if, if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort. They sort of said, oh. Well it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh no, I was saying. So were the, the other soldiers going around yeah. just going, wah? <laughs> Wilkington. <laughs> no, he ended the up being a mechanic in there and he got kicked out for, um, Going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't yeah. believe that, Carl. You've Honest made that. Honest to God, that, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your your brother's a genius. Yeah. I love this. I love this. Well, first of all. Um, he gets a call from his mum, go and let him up, and he goes, oh god. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? he? Um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is, 
No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of fags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, did, I was Did your mum phone out and say, let him off? <laughs> <laughs> no, let him off this time. Can he- yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about eleven years, but ever since he came out he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off, but I think if you're a certain type of person it's good, it's good for it you. It didn't straight him here, how could it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank, he was shagging someone no, behind but their he was, bed. It's yeah. really weird, it's like back then he was like a proper adult and he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he oh, hasn't I, I'm seriously, I haven't seen him for about eleven or twelve years. Oh, so I it it always start, uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the- uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Cause it's just too stressful. <laughs> Where I test Carl on his, uh, homework. Yeah, for the week. History. The re-education of Carl Pilkington. As you know, we found out last week that he'd uh, taken one GCSE and he'd got an E and it was history. Do you know, Steve, I haven't told you this, went shopping on Sunday, buy some new jeans, was in a shop, saw an old lad who I haven't seen for about two and a half years, went, you alright mate, how are you doing? First thing he said, sorry to hear about your exam results. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> I had he listened to the show or someone yeah, had just told him? Yeah, he was on a train listening to it on the way to a football match or something. He knew that you were on the show, did he? He was a yeah. listener. First thing he said. Wow. So sorry about your exam results. Haven't people have been coming up to you in the station going, you yeah, right, right. You, do you want to talk about it or? God. I know. Well, well you did take it pretty badly for a 29 year old man. Just a bit of a shock because it annoyed me that- I It wasn't a shock. You no. knew you, you hadn't got any. No. I thought I'd have got a bit more than that. I wasn't expecting, you know. But you weren't. You didn't even think you took history, so that must have been a bonus. Yeah, that's what my girlfriend said. Yeah. So, well, well, didn't she say something quite philosophical, which was like, you know, you didn't even have a knee this morning. Yeah, she said yesterday, you know, <laughs> you, you didn't have anything <laughs> yeah. Yeah. today, exactly. which was good. Yeah. Mm. But anyway. Anyway, okay then. Well, you were tested on uh, Che Guevara, right, Carl? We should just, hang on, we should just remind people what happened, because last This is a little series, I've got a lot of these little books, right, they're about like, um, two and a half inches long by about, you know, two inches wide, those tiny little things you see in the, sort of, on the front counter of Waterstones or Smiths, and it's, a uh, The Life and Times, a series of all the great, all the greats in history. Uh, last week you read about Rasputin and he wasn't impressed. No. Uh, this, this week- This book's a little bit thicker than the Rasputin one. No, it's the same, I think, was it? Maybe the writing's Thick, so you're writing or something. Um, but, okay, Che Guevara, who was Che Guevara? Just, just, uh, now, you learnt to pronounce it, right? And how do you remember? You told me the week how you remembered to, to what his name was. Che is like Shake, and his, his surname is like Guitar. Right. Shavara. Okay. Um, but anyway, <laughs> right, um. Tell us what you know and I'll, I'll, we'll ask. Right, first of all, um, his, his name isn't really Che. Right. It was something else, and Che means buddy okay. in uh, wherever he's from uh, Argentina. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Yeah. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Right, so anyway, he was born, and he was, uh. By the way, Carl's not reading this from a book now. This is all out of his own head. This is just... not pre planned notes. No, this is. this is. I mean, it's I know it sounds up. written, but he's just. Yeah. Right, here on we this. go, here we go. Go on. Um, he was born, um. He, he had bad asthma as a kid, right? which I thought was quite interesting because they didn't have cars and that back then and that's what they're blaming asthma on these days, the bad, the bad build up of traffic and that. Well they so did have cars, Carl. Not as many as they have now. Okay. Um, so that was, that was something I picked up early yeah. in yeah. the story. Uh, he had asthma, yeah. His dad, his dad was into poli- he wasn't a politician or anything but he was, you know, they were into the politics. Sure. So he sort of grew up around a family who was into, you know, watching the news and that and keeping up to date on yep, what's going on yep. in the world. So that sort of rubbed off on him. He went to school, he was doing stuff on medicine. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be a doctor, or he thought he did. Yeah. Um, anyway, he, he learned really quick. He did like, uh, six months work in about three months. So he could That's have it. some time off school or something. Right. So he, he took that time off. Yeah. And went to travel. South America with his mate. Okay. On a motorbike. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, he saw all this bad going on in the world and he thought, oh, this, this is bad, this. Yeah. You know, I, I sure. could do something here, I could yeah. change this, make it a nicer place to live. So he, um, 
he said, what I'm gonna do is, uh, join a gang right. that sort of, uh, is against the, uh, like the, like the government. Yeah. Right. Right. Am I right so far? Yeah. You're doing very well. Right. And, and the woman who he met, who was like running this gang, is a woman called Ilda, who he later married. Right. And Ilda introduced him to Castro. Right. Who was like the, the like the head cheese of the gang. Right. Who wanted to change things. Okay. And, um, so, uh, she said like, this is, this is, uh, I think his real name was Eng Engelbert or something like that. Ernesto. What? Ernesto. Ernesto. She said, this is Ernesto, he does medicine, should have him in our, in our sort of army, yeah. so when there's injuries and that, he can, he can make people better. Yeah. So he said, yeah, alright then. So he joined the gang and they went like, uh, went, went to sort of, I'm chopping it down a bit. This no, 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 sure, 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 sure. you're, 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 you know, you're condensing it's this. It's not, thing, it's not in real time. No. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so they go It feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I just wanted to ask you to ask me questions. Well, listen. Let me cut to the let's cut to the chase then. So, okay. um, obviously, well, he made his name as part of the uh, Cuban Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know what date that was? <sighs> About. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. And uh, obviously, so uh, he, he was he, he had a big involvement in that. Yeah. Um, well, what, what, where, where, which country was he um, was he caught? He was caught in Bolivia. Yeah. Uh, how did he die? They executed him. Yeah. He shot him, and his last words before he died, right, the, the guy's there with the gun, huh. and he, w he wasn't scared, he didn't, he wasn't like crying or anything, he said to the bloke with the gun, he said, go on, shoot me, uh, be a man, yeah. he said, yeah. and they shot him. And yeah. did, did it tell you what happened to him after that, his dead body? No, but Sue Dunn was telling me about this the other night, she said there's more to it than that, they stuck it in a... In a in a glass coffin, didn't yeah, they? So, well, yeah. well, no, but before that, they cut off his hands and his oh, feet, feet and sent them to. The uh, no, 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 and that, because they and they buried them in different places, and then they buried the body. I think they might have sent the hands to chat uh, to uh, Fidel, but uh, they they buried him in an unmarked grave because they didn't want anyone to um, start using his his grave or his tomb as a place martyrdom. of martyrdom. But of course, that just made him even more of a martyr because no one knew where he was buried, so it just meant that he was yeah, even more of a. Yeah, but that would work anyway because if they did find out, that's more places people can go and sort of grieve. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If Genius. you've got all these different graves. What with different parts of his body? Oh, well, you've got a foot over there and it's like, well, you know, oh god. His head over there. Thanks for what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, so, so all in all, all so in all, essentially, what's your summary of Che? <laughs> yeah, uh, you like him more than Rasputin, don't you? A lot better bloke than Rasputin. I can understand why he, he gets one of those little books. Um, well worth knowing about and, um, good bloke. Did a lot, you know. Crammed a lot into his short life. Yeah. But, um, yeah, interesting bloke. But um, just just on the subject of uh, Che Guevara, um, Steve called me up in the week because he was going through the, the duty log. We love the complaints on the BBC duty log, and someone had written in because one of the Blue Peter presenters was wearing a Che Guevara T-shirt. And what did the bloke say? Yeah, this is a, a series of people can phone in and, and write and uh, complain to the BBC about different things. Why would you complain about wearing something? Well, this is no, this it? was the thing. Is you complain about the best? One, I mean, there's been some amazing complaints. Oh, there's there. some great ones. The, the best one, my favourite, my favourite one that wasn't a complaint but was actually just someone had to phone in was what an excellent edition of Kilroy this morning. <laughs> yeah, which but there's lots of that. It's things like Esther was superb. Yeah. Woman call yeah. one. Woman called. There yeah. was a brilliant one I remember once, which was um, uh, Robbie Williams was wearing a Nike T-shirt on top of the pops last night. Product placement on the BBC. It's just all so things that. Like yeah. But anyway, this was this was one phone call. There was a, a presenter on Blue Peter. She was wearing a T-shirt with Che Guevara's face on it. Right. And um, someone had written in and said, uh, or someone had phoned in and said, very worried to see uh, a presenter wearing uh, Che Guevara's face on a T-shirt. Are you trying to turn my children into communist revolutionaries? Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine who's thinking that, who's bothering to phone up with that information, Carl. Yeah. Who knows what they're gonna say about this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you've been championing the work of, uh, Communist Revolution. Luckily, luckily, no one listening to this show can either write or operate a phone. <laughs> so I think we're pretty safe. So, so thumbs up for Che Guevara. Yeah. Well done to Carl there. Yeah, no, I uh, thought it was even brilliant. Right, but the thing yeah, is, that, you, that, you keep saying to us, you don't understand why history is interesting, and yet you're clearly interested by that. You, you remembered that Carl. information. Do you, I've got another. Yeah. I've got. I've got a few in the series. Can I, can I give you your next week's homework? Go on. There you go. Oh. Read it out. Hitler. Hitler. The life and times of Hitler. Eighteen eighty nine to nineteen forty five. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you know much about him? What, what, what was the significance of that last date? Why did he- what, what was the was that last date, Carl? Why do you think he died in 1945? End of the war. Yeah. <laughs> which I'm interested in. So this- Yeah. This will have stuff about Anderson shelters and that. <laughs> it might- it might not be covered in the Hitler, um, biography, the Anderson shelter, but- Just I mean, check if there was a special Anderson, uh, <laughs> chapter. Anderson <laughs> shelter chapter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll look forward to this. Yeah, It'll be, yeah. be interesting. Uh, powdered Egg is page four. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, right. we're gonna play a hip hop. Yeah, we're it's time for a hip hop hooray. Um, people are absolutely in love with this feature, Rick, as you well know, and I know you're somewhat jealous of it. Yeah. Uh, this week, I know that Outcast are currently on the playlist, aren't they, with their new single, Whole of the World, is that yep. what, the whole world? Anyway, this is a track, uh, from the big compilation, Outcast, uh, it's just a sort of compilation of all their greatest hits, and uh, this is a good one, it's called Rosa Parks. Now, we just had a call, uh, from someone, uh, impressed by Carl, and Carl's very pleased, because this guy has actually done a PhD on Che Guevara. So in theory, whatever subject he chose, in theory, he's probably one of the experts in the world on this particular field. Now, hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, what's your name? My name's David. David, now, you, now where did you do your PhD? Did at UCL. Did at UCL, mild, mild college. Yeah. And what was the actual title of the PhD? It was uh, Che Guevara's influence on class struggle in uh, Europe in the 60s. And what did you think of Carl's performance? In I his, thought he his... did really, really well. The only thing, I'd never heard those last words before. So. So Carl <laughs> actually knows something you don't know. Yeah, possibly. Although you <laughs> presumably not take that as verified information. You'd probably you probably wouldn't take everything Carl said uh, as gospel. You'd probably look it up yourself, would you? I probably would have a look. Did, yeah. Did you know about baby's eyes? Sorry. Did you know that baby's eyes don't grow? I didn't know that. You see, that's why you shouldn't take yeah. things Carl says as uh, as gospel. Because it, it come out with something, you know, m you know, vaguely, uh, intelligent, and then say, did you know about baby's eyes don't grow? Um, any, uh, any questions that you'd want to test Carl on? Any, uh, thoughts, anything he missed there on the, uh, history of Che Guevara? I think he did really well, and, uh, I, I think, I think he should be congratulated. What, no, because, because Carl has problems with understanding why people are interested in history, and well, even though he's been reading these books, he keeps saying, why does anyone care about history? Why is it important? What would you say to, uh, Carl? I think he should maybe then look at w who Che Guevara did influence, and why he still influences people today. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, well, he knows that he influenced, um, Citizen Smith, uh, and he knows that if McDonald's ever wanted to swap, uh, Ronald McDonald for Che Guevara, it would cost him an awful lot of money. <laughs> so he is trying to p apply it to the modern world. He's, he is having a go. Well, maybe you should think, like, why Rage Against Machine have him on, on their t-shirts. Good point, mm -hmm. Carl. Why do you think of that? Why do you think they have him on the t-shirts, Carl? F I thought, I don't know, maybe that's... That was a design of the t-shirt. Maybe they wanted another t-shirt. Maybe they wanted Ronald any, McDonald's. But didn't have any in. <laughs> sure. And they said, oh, we'll have that one there then. <laughs> well, thanks very much, um, Dave. Just, uh, just before you go, do, do you think Carl would be an interesting subject for a PhD? Yeah, very much so, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. um, well, if, if you know, if you know- Well, hopefully one day you'll become a professor and you can maybe set that as some, uh, coursework. I do, yeah. Carl Pilkington. Imagine that. Cheers, Dave. I'm having an MA in Carl Pilkington. <laughs> thanks very much, Dave. Okay, bye. Cheers, bye. Oh, that's good. My teachers never did that. What encouraged you in that never, way? Never said well done. So really? Yeah. But you never showed up. Yeah, they, they, no, you actually be in the same room. They were too really. busy saying, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but me, Mrs. Matthews, me, me head teacher. Oh, sure. let's not lay into Matthews again. Oh, not, getting into not Matty she Matthews. Says, not not never, Grimble Matty Matthews. I'd never to be a high flyer. D d if she could see you now. That, what did she say? She, you'll never be a high she, flyer? She said that to me, mum and dad. On, really? On a parents' evening. <laughs> What and that was after I'd played the drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> she clearly didn't know what she was talking about. M with Orange Class on XFM 104.9. Well, then he's only 20 minutes to go. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve and Carl. Carl, what did you point? What did you point to me then? Just then reminded me. Go on. O Orange Crush. Do you know we were talking the other night about contraceptives? Uh, no, you said to me. Uh, I've got to do lots of homework. You look up how they used, in the olden days, how they used to use elephant dung as a contraceptive. <laughs> and I went, what? And he went, no, look up. You make sure you give me those things. I said, I don't know. Was it they put, when you're running around with dung on the end of your knob, no woman really wants to go near it. Is that how it worked? And he went, come on, you give me things to do. If you've just written a PhD on how to use elephant dung as a contraceptive, please get in touch. And I'll nice. give the number in a minute. It's not elephant, it was crocodile. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Why? But, um, yeah, orange Sorry, crush. no, you can't- no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Back. <coughs> what do you mean, it was crocodile dung? What, how do they use crocodile dung as a contraceptive? I don't know. Right, go on, orange crush, yeah. So orange crush, um, what it was, I, t I was trying to look up that, that thing about, um, crocodile stuff, mm. using it, and, um, I came up with another one saying that they used to use 
a lemon, sort of shaped right, and the um, put it put it on, and the citric is that the um, citric acid citric acid in it kill the sperm. would kill the sperm. Right. So they would sorry they would wear the lemon on the end of the knob. Was that whilst. erotic? It works. At least not try anything, Carl, mate. That works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If the ladies like that, I mean, does it act, could it be anything? Could it be like a, you know, a melon? Kumquat? Yeah, maybe. In my, but in my case. What's those hairy ones? Yeah. Anyway, that uh, just reminded me when it, orange, orange crush. Well, thanks very much for that, Carl. It's, uh, and that, I didn't even ask him to. No, 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 that. no, no. He just So orange crush reminded you of the lemon contraceptive. Mm. Okay. Jolly good. You Maybe. could use it as a little lemon squeezer, couldn't you? It could be like a novelty lemon squeezer. You just stand in the kitchen, <laughs> and then when someone wants to just come along and go yeah. <laughs> on the end of your. Did yeah. you make this uh, lemonade yourself? Uh, yes, I, I did. did. It tastes funny. <laughs> it tastes funny. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Anyway. Do, do you? Would you? Carl, this is a quick question to you. Would you ever sort of find yourself in a situation where you might confuse a woman's breasts with mountains? <laughs> is that a concern for you? Do you think? No. Not not a problem for you. Well, not if they're not if they're small and humble, I would. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. That's what fingers crossed. If they were small and humble, then I'd, I'd pretty much not confuse them with mountains. Thank God, but I mean, if they were large and, and sort of pendulous. And with, like, like, quite rocky with snow on top. Exactly. Then I'd go, hold on, love. Wait a minute. Hold on, love. I was into this, but now exactly. it, it, I feel like I'm alone. Carl, do you know what we're talking about? Who's, who has, who has done that? I'll Who's give you a clue. One more time. See, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Shakira. It's a lyric that taking the nation by with. storm. It's quite a nice song. It's got another. Uh, it's very much like. It sounds a bit like uh, Men at Work, don't it? Yeah, it's got the pan pipes. Is this uh, What's It's Kid? Who? Um. Julio Inglesius. <laughs> no, it's Shakira. Consequently, uh, the word Shakira <laughs> there being mentioned. I haven't heard of him. Okay. She's a big Latin star, apparently, big Latin American star. Uh. And, uh, anyway, just sing it again for us. See, here my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Which is a concern, it was always a concern. <laughs> Definitely. And she, uh, so the number of times she's woken up, and there's been a fat bloke with a beard and a little, a little Sherpa, she goes, what are you doing? And they go, we're just trying oh. to climb this map. Look again! Oh, sorry, love. Oh, your tits, I didn't realise. Oh, tits, we thought we were in I can't believe it. I can't. Well, can we camp? Here? You can't camp on my tits for the night. No. Well, why are you climbing them? Well, I just because they were there. Well, they're small and humble. Are you mental? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I love that look of Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, it, when you sort of uh, uh, you go t -t -t to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people. That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when like a child sees a midget or something in the street. <laughs> They're just transfixed, aren't they? And the parents oh, get those there. When we were pushing um, Ash, just the, our producers uh, in a wheelchair, and we were pushing him through the VC. He's not a midget, we should make that. No, he's not a little midget, he's not tall. But um, we were pushing him through the VC, and this little kid just came up and just stood in front of him and looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> I just laughed. It was funny. <laughs> do you do that? I imagine that you get caught staring at him. <laughs> do you go out to people? Do you go out to people with problems and go, Mummy, is that a monster? Well, I was telling you one about when I used to go with my dad in the taxi. Oh, yeah, what, tell what this story. Well, um... Your dad, father was a taxi driver? My dad used to, he had loads of jobs. Mm. Which he did back then, and they don't do that anymore, do they, people? Don't, they don't <laughs> have do loads of, jobs? of stuff. Sure. But, um, it, one, at one point, he had a black cab, and I, I used to, uh, used to go with him. He used to get, a, like, a, a beer crate and put it in the front of the black cab. Yeah. Sort of sit just next to the meter. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> anyway, we got this call, and, uh, like, the guy on the end of the radio said, Oh, you've, you've got, uh, you've got your son with you, haven't you? So he said, yeah. So it's just like, you know, we've got a pick up at uh, number 11 Village Lane or whatever. And he said, oh, all right. And it was this woman. It was like a woman version of the Elephant Man. Wow. The Elephant Woman? Yeah, it looked like... <laughs> it, 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 like it was really oh. strange because I was in the front of the cab and um, when you're a kid, you, if, you, if something looks odd, you, you're a bit scared of it, aren't you? Yeah. And my dad was like, look, it'll be all right. And we're, we're driving towards just, her. Look at her, don't worry, son, I've got loads of buns. And just to I think I'll just throw one down the street if it, if you you're, run after you're it. You're being mean, right? How I old, am a little bit, yeah. How old were you, 18? No, I was, I was about 12 or sure. something like that. 11, 12. Hmm. And as we got closer to her, it looked like she, she, she was holding, like, a bag of spuds on her shoulder. For a snack. <laughs> <laughs> right. And her head was all a bit mangled and messy and that. And uh, my dad says, my dad said, Whatever you do, don't stare at her face. Yeah. And she got in the back. Because you turn into stone. 
<laughs> she got in the back, and I, I had like the mirror, the, dri the driver's mirror thing, yeah. and sort of having, having a look, trying to work out. And I really, I mean, he said, "Don't stare at a face." I couldn't work out where her face was. <laughs> it was that. It was that weird. <laughs> oh God! So I'm not sure you're from Manchester. I think you're from like Narnia or something. <laughs> Yeah, you or, got frog or, boys walking yeah, around the Lord of the Rings. They've the, got like the claws of a lobster and the and the head of a toad. Yeah, and you got women getting in with spuds for heads. I mean, what what this sort is not of what is this, this is not place? The place you grew up. This is yeah, mad. Oh, you can't believe it in London, can you? You come down and you go look symmetry. It must be amazing. It must be a, a, a thing to do with upbringing, though, mustn't it? And because again, do you know I've said to you before years ago when I was a kid and didn't have any worries. Good looking lad, mm. you go through it a bit. Have a few more worries, and you look knackered. <laughs> now back there, there's a lot more worries and stuff, so you get a lot more freaks. Whereas in London, everyone's like happy, aren't they? Got I love the money. fact that stress can cause your <laughs> fingers to fuse and your heads yeah. to grow. No, but if, if she like... must have been really stressed to have a head <laughs> yeah, yeah. She what, was pretty, yeah, was she an accountant or something? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But what? But what does she do? What does she say? Where was she, she going, in? by the she, way? She couldn't speak. London <laughs> Zoo, please. I think she, <laughs> she was- she was going to like to a the fair. <laughs> Seriously, honest to God. <laughs> On my mum's life she was. Because at the end of the day, that's a good thing with animals, they don't judge you, do they? She's not she an, was animal. an animal. She's a human being. She's not actually an elephant. No, but she- You know the elephant man was not actually an elephant. <laughs> you understand that? He's got no elephant genes in him at all. No. That was just a cruel name people gave him. Yeah. No, it's the name of the disease, isn't it? Elephantitis. <laughs> That's, look, so listen, so this woman, why was she going to a pet shop? <laughs> she was going to a pet shop? Come on, to find her husband. Is, <laughs> is, this, is this true? No, it is true, yeah. Oh, I'm, God. I'm not, I'm not taking the mickey, because it must be so, really bad for you. Of course it is. Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm, have... I'm going on to you today about cutting myself shaving. Yeah. What's going on about that? To think that she, I mean, she's probably not alive now, but to <laughs> think but what are you saying? You're going to say this is a worse problem than a little cut shaving, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The I think you're right. Like, you just, there's a couple of key questions I need to ask. One, if she couldn't talk, yeah. how did she tell your father where to drive her? Did she have a note? Did her she her point with her nose? <laughs> yeah. Right, this has got silly. <laughs> Pick your song. But and also, <laughs> finally, where did you say she lived again? It was like in a village. A little small village. Right. Um, just hidden out of the way. All I'm saying is we could maybe <laughs> get like some sort of coach, book some coaches, get a coach party out there to have a look at her. And, uh, and now the, <laughs> you can make some lemonade. The offspring of a woman and some spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Please enter at your peril. Should give me a shiny shilling? Wow. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm going to play um, a little bit of teenage fan club song for uh, the lovers here. We left it very late, which we've been just uh, you know rapping with uh, Carl P here, and this is I Need Direction. Fan one of four point nine. Um, so well, we're we're nearly there. So will your girlfriend be proud of you now? You performed a PhD. Graduate there. It's a bit annoying because she's not in London today. She's in Sunderland or something or Newcastle. Right. Working. So she won't know what the y your greatest triumph. She, she she saw last week's and you got an E in history and now this week you cut you come through yeah. with some great praise that Miss Mrs Matthews never you know laid upon Even you. Even looked she? at. No. no. Just said you won't be a high flyer. Hey. Eh? You've shown them, haven't you? You never know. I mean, I had mates who um <laughs> like you know we mate. Colin Makin, who sure. did the disco with me. Pilkins making music, yeah. Pilkins making music. Yeah. He was dead brainy. I don't, I don't think he's up to much these days. Sure. Just, you just, can't plan it. Yeah. Just goes yeah. to show. Well, I mean, you can do a certain amount of planning. You can do. I mean, driving a tank down to the shops with some fags <laughs> yeah. never going to mean you're a high flyer. You and that, that that woman uh, who you picked up in your black cab, she's in a circus now and yeah, she can happy. fly. Which is good. Am I confusing that with a film? You went to see a film this week, didn't you? Mm. What, what did you see? see? Um, the, um, Monsters, Inc. Oh, did yeah. Did you have a little argument? What was the argument about? Did you have an argument with your girlfriend or something? Cause about well, the history thing took over last weekend, to be honest, when you found out my results. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the talking topic of most of the weekend. And <laughs> why? What did you say? You, know, you brought it on yourself, you know, why didn't you take it serious, you know? Was you she annoyed or upset? Well, she just sort of said, you can learn, look, you, you learnt Rasputin. Mm. You know, if only you did that. You've done that. School, that. You've done Rasputin. You know what I mean? She said you can do it if if you're told to. She said, you know, it's only because Ricky's told you to read the book that you're reading it. Mm. Does she think we're sort of like taskmasters? Does she think we bully well, you? Uh, nah, she knows it's just a laugh. Yeah. What did you did you tell your uh, parents about your? No. Nope. No. Never. Because they they never even questioned where my results were, so I don't want to tell them that. 
you know, I didn't get any. No. What, how did they do it at school? I didn't have them back then, did they? Right. Uh, <laughs> when was that called? The Middle Ages. Middle Ages. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like I say, back then it wasn't about getting results and that, was it? It was just about learning trades. Mm. I mean, my dad, right, he can, like, put windows in his house. Yeah. Do plumbing. He should, it's dark, isn't it? He's, he's done that, first of all. Right, so, so he can do what? He's got a multitude of different yeah, jobs. Yeah, he can do all sorts, do you know what I mean? Mm. If there's a problem in my flat, I can call him up and say, you know, this isn't working, what should I do? Mm. And he'll say, like... Is that not a brain surgeon? He'll yeah. say, oh, fix it. Sure. Uh, so what about Monsters, Inc? What yeah. do you make of it? Um, it's alright. It, it is a kid's film. It, it sort of annoys Is it? <laughs> okay. I was having, like... <laughs> <laughs> what, what gave that away, do you think? <laughs> Was it the songs? Was it the animation? <laughs> yeah, the fluffy was little it, things yeah. that squiggled round on the screen for yeah. an hour and a half. It is annoying because, like, there's kids everywhere and kids don't watch films, do they? No. Do you know what I mean? They're messing up. I don't know why they make kids films. And you can't, to be honest, it's mental. You can't concentrate properly when mm. you've got kids, you know, Screaming making chain. noise around you and that. Yeah. So I'd say, my little review, wait until it comes out on DVD. Okay. <laughs> what a great review that would <laughs> be! Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Film 2002. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Ross going, well, I don't want to give it away when it comes out on DVD. Yeah. Oh. No, but not giving it away, it's just that you can't watch it properly when there's kids screaming around you. Yeah. Sure. Do you know what I mean? What are you looking forward to this week? You gonna go and see anything? Just been talking to Ricky now, because my missus is away. I'll probably, uh, get out a DVD tonight. Yep. Rounders. Oh, right, okay. I thought you might like that. And if you can get, so, I mean, if I can get you tickets, say, in the stores or in a box for the stage version of Midnight Express, would you be up for that? <laughs> it's on, it's on ice. I think it's the final year, it, isn't it's it? It's lovely. It's Midnight Express on ice. Yeah. And it's a musical as well. They're on roller skates. Do you have any dope under your jacket? No. Yeah. It's well it's, it's, it's great. John yeah. Hurt is actually in this version as well, yeah. which is fantastic. He played the Elephant Man. So it's all comes, the universe all comes together. Have you ever seen the stage version of the Elephant Man? No. You'd love that? Yeah. Who's in that? I have seen a clip of it. Who plays him? Uh, I've, I've I think they've got a real guy with actual, with elephantitis. Right. Yeah. What are you finishing on? Uh, let's, uh, have a final song for the ladies. It's from, uh, the album Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me by The Cure. And it's the beautiful catch. See Goodbye. You See you next week, everybody. Bye-bye.